Hello everyone, we are at the Aeronautical Development Establishment in Bangalore and at ADE, we are now at the Flight Control System wing of ADE, a very significant department, FCS. Right from 1987, the FCS story began. Very, very inspiring story. Hello, sir. Hello, Anand. How are you? Yes, sir. So, you are at a very, very critical, what to call, component of the light combat aircraft, the flight control system, the digital fly-by-wire system, what we have been discussing in the last uh, episode. That is the place where you are now today. So, what and, are we uh, going to show today, uh, sir? Today, you will meet the people and the facility which has really developed their fly-by-wire system for the light combat aircraft. And you know, that is the critical element. The heart. Heart, uh, critical element for the uh, unstable light combat aircraft to fly safely and to maneuver and to be agile. Okay. All the characteristics what we are talking about, that is the uh, system, which is the really, as you rightly said, the heart of the system. And the team, you'll meet a couple of them who have really played an important role and they are now taking the whole thing forward, okay? They are now mm. taking the whole thing forward. Q youngsters, <laughs> straight from the college they joined many years back and today they are spearheading the programs at I, different I, levels. I, of course, they are now older, but I still consider them youngsters because they joined soon after they completed their engineering and uh, they lived with the program. They lived with the program and now they are taking it forward. They have now leadership positions. Okay, let's see how we go forward. I just, uh, as we are going, I want to you also remember, there is one engineering test station that was first built. And it was not as simple. The test facilities are, are also as critical as the onboard system itself. Okay. Okay. And creating that test facility was also a challenge. And uh, there is an engineering test station here. And uh, that, in fact, helped in making the first flight subsequently. But beyond that, the next generation systems have now come. We are going to meet them along with the next generation engineering test station. All right. Okay. So, let's uh, see that. Well, I'm here with uh, Dilip, who has lived with the flight control system of the light combat aircraft. In fact, he joined the ADE and he has seen the whole journey of the light combat aircraft and the heart of the light combat aircraft, the flight control system, the fly-by-wire system, what we are talking. Dilip, I'm very happy you are here. Nice that uh, see you. I still think you are a young Dilip and you still smile in the way you used to smile. Yes. Good. Amma, it is Kala who takes the responsibility for the complete software. The light combat aircraft flight control system is 100% software controlled. It's a digital system. There is nothing analog of it. First time we entered in straight away into digital system, the whole world was going for analog, then hybrid, then digital. But here we entered into the digital. Again, Kala joined as a young girl soon after her engineering. And uh, happy Kala, you are here. And now you are the leader of the team. And I can see the kind of responsibilities you have taken up. And today you are... Uh, taking um, sure that we are uh, not only we have built a world-class system that we are taking forward to the next generation, next generation and all. And happy to uh, see you here. And I've been uh, watching you for many decades. <laughs> nice to see you here. So Anand, yes. we have two tall words who are young when they started, but now they have in the leadership position. Absolutely inspiring. So let me just first go to uh, Dilip. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, who is at a very senior role at ADE now. Uh, let me just take you back. You're from Anandpur, right? You're from Anandpur. I did the, my uh, bachelor's degree from Anandpur. Your bachelor's degree. And immediately after engineering, you joined ADE. Yes, almost. And uh, you, Srikala ma'am, you from after your graduation, you joined. MSC. So, MSC. So, how old you were then? 23. 23 and you were? I was uh, 22. Yes. Okay, so 22 years. <laughs> For the benefit of the young fellows, what inspired you to join ADE? Or do you? Okay. Uh, the inspiration is from the days uh, when we used to study, listen about the uh, the defense, uh, and doing something for our own country has always been uh, a very inspirational from those days. 
So as young engineers, when we came out of the college, our first effort was to see, can I get an opportunity to work directly in a direct association with the projects which deliver something to the services. Right. Yeah, so. I remember interviewing you some 20 years back. Yeah, you were, you know, yes, yeah, right. yeah, you were, uh, you know, you, as a youngster along with the team, yes. great memories. And Srikula, ma'am, um, as Dr. Cotter said, the stalwarts of, uh, of, uh, of, of ADE now. Uh, what was young Srikala's dream when you were in your college, just finishing your MSc? You were locked on to getting into here? Actually, when I see the aeroplane flying in the sky, it was always a passion that I should join something to do with, join uh, for something which works for aeroplane. And I never thought I will get an opportunity. But then when I got for MSc Computer Science and later into the LCA program, that was the greatest thing I could achieve in life, I felt. And uh, ever since, it was always forward. We were in the design team and uh, always like right from the first version of the software to till today what we are delivering. I'm part of it in the design team. That is a great achievement, I consider. Look at the skies, watch aeroplanes, young fellows, and you can perhaps chase your dreams in a big way. That is what Srikala Ma'am is saying. Sir, now let's uh, get on to the uh, question session. Uh, Dilip. The, while the flight control system is the heart of the uh, LCA, the flight control computer, the digital, so is the heart of the flight control system. Okay, I can see you are right, you are here, there. And uh, the development of this itself was a major challenge. And uh, the, everybody in India outside felt that we wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. And uh, would you like to tell a little bit about what it meant developing this flight control computer? Yeah. Very proud moments of association uh, in the conceptual stage of the design development activities for LCA. Uh, I was, as an young engineer, I was given an opportunity to, to, to start the design and development of this quadruplex digital full authority fly-by-wire flight control yeah. system. So uh, if you actually look at at the technology of uh, 90s, this system, which has four channels and all of them functional, continuously communicating among all the channels using a high-speed cross-channel data links, going through this development from the concept to realizing this today, and we have gone qualified it. So the challenges were uh, the contemporary processors that we have selected uh, during that time. And uh, you started, you remember, sir, that we started with the Intel 80960MC processor, a 32-bit okay. processor. From there, we have actually gone, that's the digital part of the, the digital card actually has the processor, which was contemporary during those days. And of course, the each channel comprises of four different modules, and there is a continuous cross-channel data link communication that goes among all of them. And this is built to a standard to a full mill qualified qualifications Military standards. Military standards. Highest military standards. Highest military standards. standards. A very rugged computer, highly reliable uh, to the requirements for the aircraft, the probability of loss of control of 1 into 10 to the power of minus 7 to achieve. That means you, one fly lure in 10 million. 10 million hours. 10 million is what is acceptable. Yeah. So you design and you demonstrate that you are able to achieve that kind of reliability. Absolutely. See, the system here is the design team does the design and it is realized, okay? The realization itself is a major challenge. They have worked very closely with a very important, uh, what you call, uh, undertaking called Bharata Electronics, okay? They played a very important role in this uh, uh, development of this one. And uh, right from development and production, that all the flight control computers are coming from there. All the updates that we wanted, they are incorporating those changes also. Today, from an imported one, we have brought in FPGAs and other things. And today, it is totally more and more indigenous. So it makes it a, a really an important element. And uh, what is important is all are active channels. All the four are active channels. And uh, they are all cross-connected. And uh, the, each one is in line in uh, uh, what you call in, uh, in, in keeping track of all of the other things. So that is what makes it very, very, very important. And uh, the development, uh, I'm happy today, this uh, during the last uh, so many uh, thousands of flights, uh, the system has proved itself very well. Okay. 
and that is what makes us uh, happy that we have a total, total control over the technology. What does an FCS system do in a Tejas? Sir, the, first of all, this is a flight control system. So, based on the pilot, uh, what the aeroplane should respond is commanded by this computer. And it is, as Kota sir said, it's a safety critical system uh, and actively participating in control all the time. So, the software residing in it has to identically compute the commands and it is a quadruplex system. So, there is a lot of challenges for realizing a quadruplex system. People who write program for single thread control itself now, it's complicated. But here, four com computers have to identically command the aeroplane under all failure conditions. All right. So, where does this FCS sit in a Tejas? That is in the front of the aircraft, okay. just behind the cockpit. Okay. There is a location where the flight control computer comes. And uh, uh, it's, uh, you, know, you can see the number of connections that are there here. Okay. Too many connections and all. They are also continuously working how to make it. Uh, what you call more maintainable and all that kind. The one point I think, Kala, uh, you have to talk about is the software. It is a safety critical software. Yes. Okay. Sir. Yes. So far, in our country, for an airborne system, we never developed a safety critical software. And uh, can you indicate what are the key features of the safety critical software? Our people are doing software left, right, center. But what is it that makes it so unique and different? Uh, sir, uh, before she answers, I remember when you asked software, I remember writing a story. Uh, I don't remember for which publication. This is again some 20 years back. So the headline was uh, uh, software sweethearts. So, <laughs> so all the women who were part of uh, your yeah, team yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and also you must perhaps tell them after you answer this question, uh, they had to uh, sacrifice their, their personal life. They have to put up with snakes at AD apparently <laughs> and so many stories. Yeah. So what is this software thing as he asked? Sir, safety critical, being safety critical system, we cannot afford to have any failures. So, there is a meticulous process for the development which has to be followed all through the phases, right from requirement phase, it has to go through the reviews, extensive reviews, then the design phase, everything pre-planned, well-designed processes, verification has to be done independently by an independent team so that no flaws are left in the software. In about uh, the hardware software integration, this is a stage where we actually check all the four computers are giving identical results. So, Kala, as you recollect, yes, sir. very first task we had was to choose a language. Yes, sir. See, we have used people were using C language and all that, but then we felt that is not good enough for a safety critical system. Yes, so we chose ADA. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then, but. Again, ADA, we did not uh, use the whole lot of it then. Yes, we sir. made a we subset a sub of ADA. Yes, sir. And that is called safe, safety safe subset. subset. Of safe so, subset. when you are listening to ADA, it is not Aeronautical <laughs> Development <laughs> Agency. Yeah, ADA no. software. Software. Right? Yeah. That is the correct point. What is there? It's a yeah. real-time software developed in a safety critical, lang yeah. uh, safety critical language, ADA language. Right. And a safe subset of the ADA has been used for this application. Now, of course, the C language has a evolved itself to a level where we can use again a subset of C, we can use it because getting trained people in ADA language is a challenge. Yes, so, I think the team is now moving towards a safe subset of C language because I think large number of C programmers are available. But there is one more thing I want to tell. We use what you call, I think all the computer people you know, a compiler. We didn't want to use a compiler just like that. We used to have validated our team compiler. went and tested the compiler to a level where they are satisfied that that compiler will meet the safety critical requirements of an airborne system. That is the second thing what you have done. Okay, yes. that is the second thing that has happened. That the third thing that happened is, while the design team does the development, software development, there is another group, independent of the these people, they will again review the complete design. They will test the whole thing. Okay. After that is done, then it goes to what you call an independent validation and verification team. It is not part of the design. What they do is they look at the requirement. They don't say what they have done. They will look at the requirement. 
from the requirement they make what you call a test uh, what you call schedule a detailed test plan uh, you may recollect kala the test plans main job is to see the coverage is 100% am i right yes, okay we have before starting the testing itself we have a well defined plan how each engineer should go doing the work see we have been doing this work for the last 20 years but we have been delivering with the consistent quality over the years we are uh, involving industry partners for this work and over the years we have been able to maintain the quality it is all because of the well defined processes what has been put in for this program well defined process put in so i want to ask you dilip lot of challenges initially tons of challenges and also perhaps you know with the customer a disbelief among you know agar kar sakte nahi can you just touch upon the challenges you guys faced in developing all this we are actually talking about this development which took place in uh, early 90s the analog computers were the popular things so the transition to the digital flight control computer that to a fly by wire technology uh, was contemporary and even it as it stands today even today it's a uh, one of the state of art technologies so when we look at the challenges during those days one is rightly getting to the processes which are the right thing to develop the product in fact one of the best thing that the entire team has done is what you see is a product but today we do have the entire technology and the process that enables to build even better state of art computers today so the challenges were obviously to race to the contemporary technology in terms of the electronic design the logic design development using uh, the pld's and fpgas and uh, dealing with the asics and from there uh, the interconnecting systems to understand the requirements translate into functional requirements partition then into different modules so yeah. we took some external help right uh, that is uh, uh, what you call ge ge uh, ge controls uh, and uh, they played an important role for us to do but what happened and now that you asked this question 1998 uh, india has exploded the atom bomb okay then uh, kala was there <laughs> i want to remember kala was there sitting there working there to do software hardware integration and all those elements there they just dispatched them they didn't allow them even to pick up their pens also you know piece of paper very interesting i remember <laughs> uh, you know interviewing you so sanctions we are talking about sanctions of 98 and kala ma'am and your team or you were alone uh, no sir i was a junior most in the team at that time <laughs> junior most so in the I team member many, many immediately after sanction she was not even allowed to step out of the hotel room till her tickets were booked to be sent back to india tough time you can't step out of the hotel uh, what were the thought did you feel that you know first when we were in the office we came to know about the sanction they came to see india has done something so we are not proceeding with this program and uh, you you just have to leave everything suddenly our computer screen screen became blank so we didn't know what it is suddenly they came and said uh, yes nothing you can do now Oh, we have stopped this program and you can't even take pen everything whatever paper whatever we were working we had to leave it in that room did you feel insulted even, at that, that point of time uh, definitely because even to go to restroom we had to be accompanied by somebody that is what was the state <laughs> all right I, so you know many but, scientists have undergone this at different stages i want to ask you so what was that young scientist in you then telling that we will make it i remember dr kalam telling his uh, piece of advice when they came back and you were there to all these youngsters then dr kalam apparently told that this is an opportunity for us to make it here because that is where his famous statement also came i keep repeating strength respect strength yes sir uh, that time when we came back dr kg and that time director called all of us and asked each of the individual do you think can you do all of us said yes definitely we can meet the challenge the working time was definitely from 7 to 10 o'clock 7 in the morning to 10 o'clock all the people in the team slog Sir, so, so it was a great sanctions did lot of good to india right yes i always thought uh, whenever somebody puts a sanction it gives an opportunity to increase our indigenous thing they these people were very much guided earlier by the uh, the us firm but now you are on your own okay the ability to think design work 
has increased tremendously. And uh, not only the flight control computer, we started now looking at how to design, develop a flight control actuator, which is a very, very, very critical part of that. Okay, it's very, very critical. Flight part. control actuator, which we'll be seeing later. Uh, we'll see uh, later. That it becomes a, because you know, see, an air, a flight control system has an onboard computer. Okay, there is a pilot sitting inside the cockpit, and the pilot is no longer flying an aircraft like I'll say. He gives a command. Okay, what the aircraft should do. Okay, that command goes to the computer. Computer then looks at the state of the aircraft. Okay, and then taking the command, taking the state of the aircraft, then it sees what is the incremental change that should be done, and that is handled by the actuator. Okay, the sensors are sensing, giving the information here. Avionics are providing the interface for the pilot to see. Avionics see the interface through the head-up display, to multifunction display and all. All these are things put together. Then the actuator is the final fellow who has to do. And that actuator has to be very precise, high bandwidth, and it must do the job intended without any phase lag. What we use the word called phase lag. All right. Okay. So, uh -huh. uh, I want to just ask you, Dilip, then, uh, how much of indigenous content is now from in terms of electronics, software, whatever you guys use. Is it all made in India? Or still we depend on? I would say that we have complete the fabrication, assembly, uh, sourcing of the components. Of course, we are dependent from some sources. But otherwise, the components, the still have to, be components have to come from... Uh, yeah. Otherwise, the entire engineering process, qualification, debugging, the upgrades, it changes to the logic which is goes into the computer and its contemporary computers which we have developed subsequently all are completely indigenized no, uh, his question was uh, one is you still india is dependent on the electronic component we have to indigenize I'm, as i am seeing today a lot of effort is going on to do that 100 percent software from consuming to the completion okay. is there the actuators which we were importing today, they are indigenous. That's a big uh, uh -huh. plus oh, for it's them. an extraordinary job. Even for plus, missiles. Uh, I want you to just turn around and see this side. A very critical element of a flight control system is the sensor system. Okay. You have industrial sensors and air data sensors. Would you like to tell, because I'm seeing a lot of sensors here, would you like to tell how we are dealing with these sensors, their development, their uh, production and all those. Can you... Explain. Mm -hmm. So one of the significant changes that uh, happened uh, during 2004 time frame is that uh, the air data sensor, air data computing system architecture in the flight control system of LCA has gone through a major change. One of them is that the, the then air data transducers, which were actually the doing the signal conditioning part of the from the pressure sensors and the vanes uh, had become obsolete. And also the computational load of the air data computations were actually happening in the flight control computer. So we were given a challenging task during those days that can we come with a contemporary architecture which will substitute the obsolete air data transducers with the new generation. With a new generation and, and also offload see, yeah. and also offload the flight control computer from the air data computing functions. So what we see here is the quadruplex distributed air data computing system which we have totally indigenously built in the country in almost a record time. And from LSP-3 aircraft onwards, this architecture is the standard of production. Yeah, good. That means we have not only done the digital flight computer, not only we have done the actuator, we also have addressed the issues dealing with the obsolescence of the what air data sensors. A very, very important point, And that is how program will move forward. Thank you. I'm very happy. Yes, um, Kala, yes, sir. new people are now coming and all. They will see everything has been developed and all that. What are the challenges which we are going to, they will have to address? We have established a great extent. We, the aircrafts are flying with the software what has been delivered by us. But there are also many aircraft programs which are coming. So the young generation has to take up these uh, responsibilities and deliver the products using the advanced technologies at a very great that's pace. Right, right. That will help the country to grow. And they and will also uh, grow. Yes. They will also grow. Yes. For example, from LCA Mark 1, we are coming to Mark 1A, yes. then Mark 2, then AMCA, yes. then many and civil many. programs. This is, these are the yes. new challenges that are now. 
uh, what you call uh, giving opportunities to the, the young people. Young I people. think uh, the opportunities are endless. Yes. The opportunity and the number of aircraft programs mm -hmm. that are now on the anvil are also many. And okay. believe me, like we definitely have the capability. Three, we have two, always stood uh, up to the nice. occasion and the oh. younger generation can do Good. You are training a lot of young people now yes. to take over. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. So, Dilip, I find we are at a engineering test station. I find it seems to be totally new compared to what we had earlier and uh, looks to be very so small also, very compact. So, would you like to tell how you evolved from the first generation to second generation? Yes, sir. So, the advanced engineering test station, what we are actually seeing, is contemporary today, addressing the complete obsolescence of the multiburst based architecture, which is what we started with in the initial development phase. But they served a long time, almost 17 years. And today, we have, we have contemporary system. This is the system where we do test the, the real-time testing of the hardware and software with all the sensor actuator interfaces simulated and also the system can actually be connected with the real systems also. Both simulation and, and the, the uh, hardware in loop. Hardware in loop simulation loop and uh -huh. we can have the models and the real systems connected. The complete functional verification of the hardware software integration in open and closed loop is done using this platform. It's contemporary so using this is the heart of the mini bud. <laughs> it's part of the mini bird. Mini of bird, what we Modern. call as a mini bird. And it's a very scalable architecture uh, because uh, this variant is what also you will see in an iron bird. So, uh, this is a completely good, good. indigenously built with the Indian vendors and uh, Make in India kind of an initiative. Good, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm happy. Today, you are evolving not only the aircraft, aircraft system, but also the test yes. facilities. And uh, they are now our Indian uh, partners. Uh, the test facility partner, they are able to write to the occasion and make them uh, go in line with the best of the technology processes that are required for this kind of a system. Good, very nice, Philip. Uh, technology is growing and uh, aircraft's requirements are also growing. So, how do you cater to that? What are your plans? What are you doing in that direction? Can you explain? Yes, sir. It's uh, my pleasure. Uh, from where we started, today when we look at the contemporary computer, what we are building for LCA variants, Mark II, Mark IA, and going forward for AMCA, what you see here looks in a form factor similar to what we have done for the Mark I, but the internal computation power has been an order better. And we have come out of the Intel 80960 MC processors, moved on to the PowerPC controllers, which are uh, high density packed, this thing contemporary in terms of the computational power and moved onto a technology which not only is uh, completely state of art electronics with uh, advanced FPGAs which are used in this design. In addition, the maintainability issue also fully, addressed. fully has been addressed, replacing the 26 front panel connectors with the airing connectors, which was one of the user requirement to be able to load the computer and pull it out of the aircraft in a record time. So, uh, as designers, we have incorporated these provisions and Good, given. I'm very happy, Dilip. Yes, sir. We are uh, now having a next generation computer, yes, which sir. will not only meet the requirements of Mark 1, uh, and also it will require the future generation of aircraft. Yes, sir. I think we are getting ready yes, for the future. Okay? Yes, sir. The project has come this far. A lot of fut futuristic projects coming. A lot of advancement already done here. What is that you want to tell those youngsters doing their 10th, 11th and you know, their degrees, all that? Where has to be their focus be if they want to really come and support India's future programs? India needs lots of system engineers to take all these programs forward. And in every area, uh, aircraft, uh, aircraft is a multidisciplinary system and lot of opportunities are there to work in every area. Be it be computer science, be it be system engineering aspects, be it be electrical side, mechanical side, every area, young engineers have a lot of opportunities. And definitely, it will be a great, proud moment for them if they join these programs uh, as they will be contributing to the nation's development. Contributing to the nation's development, plain loads of opportunity. That is what your colleague is saying, Dilip. Absolutely. Yeah, if you really look at it, uh with the advancements in the technology today, 
in addition to of course uh, the aircraft industry is a multidisciplinary subject and uh, the artificial intelligence is going to play a predominant role in the manned and unmanned aircraft systems so there's a lot of opportunity for the young, young engineers young scientists to participate with a passion and uh, the there is no limit to the thinking as uh, the saying goes so you have uh, very innovative ideas you can come with so lot of development in the ai based systems also lot of developments in ai based systems finally guru kota what i find is india is now a center for technology development excellence and the next generation manned and unmanned aircraft we have lot of work is going on now on the fifth generation fighter also very interesting work is going on on the sixth generation which will be an unmanned one so opportunities are many if there is one place in the world where opportunities are many i would say it is india okay so that's a beautiful thought one place in india opportunities the opportunity headquarters of the world is yes. india but before we sign off as always let's meet the tejas fans and this time we have some wonderful kids nice to see three of you here uh, welcome to hamara tejas and uh, i understand you have some good questions to ask uh, can you go ahead yes sir my name is sharan i'm from class 9b uh, i wanted to ask you about uh, what the role of an actuator was in an aircraft good question very important thing what happens um, when the pilot is flying the aircraft okay he wants to take off land maneuver do all that kind of thing that is done through what they call control surfaces you have a rudder okay yeah. you have an aileron you have an elevator these are all the fellows who are controlling but uh, how do you connect the pilot to this uh, this control surface there has to be that some connecting rods and uh, the uh, in a very small aircraft the rods will directly operate the control surfaces and it can fly but aircraft becomes bigger aircraft becomes heavier and uh, you can't do so then they put some actuators okay the pilots what he wants to do that uh, signal goes to the actuator and the actuator operates it okay and earlier what we used to do whatever pilot wants to do directly uh, is control rod will go uh, give a signal to the actuator actuator will operate but even that also became a problem then we got what you call servo actuators that means pilots requirements are conveyed to the computer computer in turn gives the requirements to the actuator actuator that that much which is required to be done so from a pilot manually controlling then assisted by the hydraulic then it become full servo actuator what you have in light combat aircraft is a full servo actuator so they play without the actuators you can't do anything so very important very good question you ask thank you very much here is a small gift for you okay <laughs> Good morning sir. My name is Vedika and I'm in the 8th grade. And my question is uh, to you is, can you suggest any books for youngsters who are interested in aeronautics? One of the good books you can read is The Principles of Aviation by one professor from IAC, Professor Govind Rajan. I suggest you read that book. And uh, if you want to get into aviation you need to get some motivation also yes sir so i think dr apj abdul kalam's wings of fire that would be good for you and there is also one you know poetic kind of book jonathan livingston seagull by richard bach i read it when i was a young boy uh, just uh, you know st started my engineering i still remember that book you should read that book yes that will motivate you also to get into it so this is for you thank you sir hello sir i'm aditi i'm studying in 7th my question to you is if we youngsters wants to get into aeronautics what are we supposed to do see uh, your passion is to get is to get into the aeronautics right yeah. so aeronautics incidentally the aircraft is a multidimensional sphere okay uh, you can actually pursue in being in any engineering discipline you can actually join and uh, if you see it's, it's a multi dimensional sphere in the sense you have electrical electronic engineers power system people the propulsion guys and uh, if your real interest is to get into the aerodynamics then uh, you have several engineering disciplines today in almost all the academic institutes 
and if you're right from the you should have a good physics and mathematics background so choose that in the early stage of your career and then make sure that you get into an engineering discipline of your choice okay you have wonderful institutes in india who and aeronautical is engineering is going to be a promising career uh, going to be in the future